there and welcome back to the channel. This is Nerd World. The one place where you can go where you can find anything and everything sci-fi because I like it all. And I, I just can't pin myself down to anything. So in the spirit of that, I'm going to be taking a deep dive, pun intended, I'm so sorry, into Sequest DSV or Sequest 2032, depending on where you were and what it was called. A science fiction series that went the opposite way to traditional Star Trek like Farscape and Star Trek. I know I mess that sentence up, but I'm carrying on. And we went beneath the waves for Sequest DSV, a science fiction show set beneath the waves that never always found its footing and changed from season to season a little too often and a little too much, but this is going to be a breakdown of the Sequest herself, the majestic squid-like biomechanical submarine that was the Sequest. Before we get started, please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. And please enjoy the views of my dogs randomly walking in and out behind me as I'm recording. The Sequest class submarine was designed by Captain Nathan Bridger for scientific and research purposes with secondary military applications in mind for the United Earth's oceans. It was launched in 2014 and was 307.1 meters in length. The ship was particularly distinct for its biomechanical structure, the outer skin of the vessel being organic in nature and generally having a squid-like appearance. It was propelled by water intake rams that basically sucked water in and jetted them out to propel the craft through the water and equally break it, although it did have auxiliary propulsion systems on top of that. It was powered by two fusion reactors and was armed with a variety of weapons, obviously torpedoes and laser weapons when needed on later refits, but it did carry the potential to have nuclear ordnance, but Captain Bridger would have these weapons removed from the submarine. The submarine was also unique for having large, spacious, or cavernous interiors and being able to dive further than any other manned large submarine in human history. It also was particularly distinct for one of its members of its crew not being human, at least more than one actually, but one of them technically a completely different species being a dolphin, that was Darwin. The submarine also had water tanks that allowed Darwin to access practically every area of the boat and go outside, as well as a newly developed technology developed by one of the young civilian scientists aboard the ship that allowed for verbal communication to take place, a bit like a universal translator, which translated the dolphin language into an audible human dialect, although it wasn't always 100% as some of the translations from the dolphin speech to human were not accurate as translating complex themes and concepts between two different species that have a very different outlook was quite difficult, but all the same, it gave a base point. The submarine was also equipped with a variety of auxiliary craft that included crab walkers, another craft that could simply move around the seabed, small transports and other shuttles, work bees, sensor drones that would normally sort of float around the submarine, as well as fighter submarines, specifically the Stingers as standard, as well as small surface craft such as jet skis or other craft that can be deployed on the surface of the water as well. It would also utilize others which would be UAV drones that could be launched and had satellite link-up communication of course, which allowed it to coordinate with other assets around the world simultaneously. There would be two examples of this submarine, one built in 2014 that would later be destroyed and a later one which, as far as we know, is still in service that was launched in 2021. Both of these crafts were affiliated with the UEO, the latter having certain technical modifications over the others, including an enhanced propulsion system and upgraded weaponry. Typically, the submarine could carry several hundred personnel at any given time, including a mixed bag of military and civilian personnel. Of course, the ship was ultimately run by military personnel, but the scientific and civilian embarked personnel made up the greater majority of the actual submarine's crew. Not to mention the Dolphin and Dagwood, who, when I mentioned there was another non-human, technically Dagwood is also non-human, as he is 
one of these so-called daggers or gelf, who, by the way, I've done a video on, which hopefully I'll remember to link. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. I don't always remember. So, with that said, <clears throat> that is the sea quest. Well, the sea quest, because there were actually two of them, and I think there wasn't enough differences between the two to warrant an independent video, really. They were magnificent feats of engineering, marvels to behold, the largest and most powerful and most capable submarines ever deployed by the early 21st century. Give this video a like and a comment if you remember Sequest and tell me what you remember. And would you like to see a return? Because I know that every now and again they pop up with a, they might bring it back, they might bring it back. I actually personally wouldn't mind a reboot of Sequest, I think, because as I said at the beginning of the video, like it was kind of a mixed bag. It was both good and bad. It kind of changed. Season 1 was very different from Season 2, and Season 2 was very different again from Season 3, and Season 3 had nothing in common with Season 1, aside from overlapping characters that did routinely keep changing as well. It did suffer from a lack of continuity, plus the network constantly messing about with its scheduling, airing episodes, the usual stuff. Studio interference, airing episodes out of order, messing with the formula, etc. Which kind of cursed the show. I know most fans prefer Season 1, I'm actually probably an outlier and I actually like Season 2 and I'm fairly indifferent to Season 3, but it did have Michael Ironside in it. So, with that said, discuss in the comments below, yay or nay to a Sequest reboot? I don't know, hashtag Sequest reboot, or reboot Sequest, hashtag reboot Sequest. It won't get trending, but you know, you can try. If you made it all within this video, thank you for watching and bye bye.